So what we wanted to do with this podcast is spend more time on your autonomous strategy. Uh, We're very happy that retail investors are asking questions about this on your call. Uh, We wish more institutional institutional investors would understand how important this is, not only to your model, but how it's going to change your valuation from that of from today to really software as a service almost. So, yes. So maybe, sorry, did you? Yeah, no, absolutely. We can sort of think of uh, our cars maybe long term as being effectively carriers for the autonomy, that's autonomy software. So it's like they're a vehicle literally and figuratively for autonomy, Uh, the, the software that rides on them. Yes. Yes. So Tasha has been doing a lot of our work on uh, autonomous taxi networks. We've been working on these models for five years, and it's extended into autonomous truck platoons, into parcel drones and uh, passenger drones. So we're very focused on this and would love to explore it a little bit more with you in terms of what you're doing. Tasha? Yeah. So my first question is, you know, Tesla wasn't always pursuing fully autonomous driving. If you look back in 2013, there's a couple of quotes from you saying, you know, that last 10% is incredibly hard and you need to keep a human in the loop. What's changed your mind? No, I still think the last 10% is, of autonomy is extremely difficult or, or even the last 1% of autonomy is really difficult. I think there's like a couple of things that we help to calibrate uh, with with the audience. And if I may go back to, to one thing, like generally, like for example, if I say, we will reach 5,000 cars a week. What, what I mean is that's the, that's the peak production. But then just, just for reference, when, if you have peak production of X, then you're going to be like somewhere between 80 and 85% of, of that for average production through the quarter uh, when taking public holidays um, and equipment maintenance into account. Then also for in de- defining autonomy or full self-driving, I, I think we will be feature complete full self-driving this year, meaning the car will be able to find you in a parking lot, pick you up, take you all the way to your destination without an intervention this year. I would say that I'm certain of that. That is not a question mark. However, people sometimes will extrapolate that to mean now it works with 100% certainty, requiring no observation perfectly. This is not the case. Once it is feature complete, then you're sort of kind of the march of nines. Like, how many nines of reliability do you do you want it to be? And then when do regulators agree that it is that that is that reliable? So there's feature complete for full self-driving this year with certainty. This is something that we control and I manage autopilot engineering directly every week in detail. So I'm I'm certain of this. Then when will regulators allow us even to have these features turned on with uh, human oversight. The, that's a variable which we, we have limited control over. Then it's w- when will regulators agree that that these things can be done without human oversight? That is an, an, another level beyond that. So these are externalities we, we don't quite control. And the conservatism of regulators varies conser- a lot from one jurisdiction to another. My guess as to when we would think it's safe for somebody to essentially fall asleep and wake up the destination probably towards the end of next year. That's that's when I, when I would think it's most likely it will be safe enough for that. I don't know when regulators will agree. 